got Dorothy listening in on the phone. And we are now live on Facebook. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. If you were expecting to see Alex, you were right to expect that. But um, some news from Alex is that his father is very dangerously ill. Um, and Alex had to go last night to be with him uh, and his mum. So our prayers are very much with Alex. We were sharing the good news in the pew sheet of his confirmed um, appointment which we'll tell you about when we, we are allowed to. Um, but that's good news has been very much overshadowed by this sudden emergency. So please, please keep your, uh, keep Alex and his family in your prayers. And I pray now. Loving God, I pray for Alex's dad, David, and his mum, Jill, and for all their family, that you be very present with them today and in the days to come, give them the peace that passes on understanding in the heart of this, this terrible situation and the hope that you give with that peace may it spring in their hearts. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's lovely to see everyone and uh, especially on this, what may be the last of these for the first uh, section of our next time uh, of worship, the last of these sorts of Zoom worship. We will be broadcasting Zoom from church next week, but that's very much an experiment, and we will look forward to hearing your feedback, which we will need just so that we can decide how we can go forward with our online services which we very much want to keep, not just <clears throat> because we know that so many of you won't be able or won't be uh, <clears throat> confident to return to physical worship in church, but also because we are reaching people on Facebook um, that we don't know about. So we want to keep this form of worship available. But um, those of you who are hoping to or ready to come back to church next uh, Sunday, well, that's, 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 you'll see in the pew sheets that we have um, a list of, of things that we are already deciding about. Um, that list grew the end of the week when we were told by the church that face coverings were very, very strongly urged uh, to be worn. Um, so we're, we're continuing to discuss what that means for us, but please, if you're coming to church, on Sunday, bring a face covering and we'll let you know in the meanwhile what we need you to do with that. But please be prepared to wear it. Um, so, yes, from next Sunday, we'll be in church. Our Zoom services will continue both on Sunday at 10 o'clock and also on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, we'll be very much keeping an eye on what we think we can do to bring back midweek communion in church, but it'll depend a lot on what happens on the Sundays and, and how we feel uh, we're coping with, with the demands of the restrictions and keeping everyone safe. So this service uh, is very much one that Alex uh, prepared for. And when we come to the sermon, I'm going to be in the very unusual position of reading something that Alex prepared for you. So um, please bear Alex in mind as we continue in prayer with this greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And, and also with you. So we continue our service by stilling our hearts and minds as we begin with our prayer of preparation.
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Almighty God, our Amen. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Stay together in the glory. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, King almighty King, God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with, with the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect and readings for this, the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson from Romans is brought to us by Judy. Got the, reading. Yeah. the reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 38. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. For those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, 
will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Judith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree. So that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and brought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, oh, O Christ. God. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditation of all our hearts be now and forever acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So Alex writes, A few years ago I read about a research experiment where a marine biologist had placed a shark into a large holding tank and then released several small fish into that same tank. As you would expect, the shark quickly swam around the tank, attacking and eating the smaller fish. The marine biologist then inserted a strong piece of clear fiberglass into the tank, creating two separate partitions. She then put the shark on one side of the fiberglass 
and the fish, a new set of fish on the other. Again, the shark quickly attacked. This time, however, it slammed into the fiberglass divider and bounced off. Undeterred, that shark kept repeating this behavior every few minutes to no avail, of course. And meanwhile, the fish swam around unharmed in the second partition. Eventually, after about an hour into the experiment, the shark gave up. That experiment was repeated several dozen times over the next few weeks. Each time, the shark got less aggressive and made fewer attempts to attack the smaller fish, until eventually it got tired of hitting that fiberglass divider and simply stopped attacking altogether. The marine biologist then removed the fiberglass divider, but the shark didn't go on to attack. It had been conditioned to believe that a barrier existed between it and those smaller fish, its prey. So those fish swam around wherever they wanted, free from harm. Now, there are different levels on which we can interpret this experiment. Literally, it demonstrates the intelligence of the sharks and how their behavior could be changed. But we could also read it as an allegory relating to the, how we experience the kingdom of God. More specifically, how we separate ourselves from God's reign in our lives by, by allowing the world to slide all manner of fiberglass dividers between us and God, boxing us off, as it were, from the kingdom, detaching us from God's action, God's reign. When we do that, we lose our true center, which is the kingdom of God. We lose it as a center from which we can, in which we can move and breathe and from which we can venture forth and live. We can often fill our worship both privately and collectively to the brim with talking, with singing, reading and reflecting. Stillness seems to be avoidable. We have, I think, and I would agree with Alex, too little prayerful waiting in silence. Because in that silence, we can hear our voice connecting with the voice of the Holy Spirit in a place where our waiting connects with God's waiting. Where the created itself once more attaches itself to the creator. So, we put it to you this morning that if you are willing to engage in a practice of prayer which is rooted wholly in stillness and silence, then God will change you because God's reign, the kingdom of heaven, will start to break into every aspect of your life. Thomas Merton, the Trappist monk and priest, said, Prayer is not just a formula of words or a series of desires springing up in the heart. It is the orientation of our whole body, mind and spirit to God in silence, attention and adoration. The orientation of our whole body, mind and spirit to God in silence, attention and adoration. All good meditative prayer, he said, is a conversion of our entire self to God. Maybe that kind of prayer, prayer without words, prayer where we come before God simply offering all that we are, prayer where we align or position or locate our being, our entire being, in attention and adoration and silence. Maybe that kind of prayer is a lever we can use to begin to slide out all of those fiberglass panels so that the Holy Spirit can provide us with a foretaste of heaven. In our gospel reading, Jesus tells a series of parables about the kingdom of heaven to the crowd. 
And in doing so, it illustrates how both the kingdom can grow in our lives along with what our response should be to it. So the first kingdom illustration is that of the mustard seed, which in spite of its small size, grows into the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven is like that mustard seed becoming that tree. It grows gradually in ways that the forces of our fallen world can't see, and it becomes great in size. Those listening to Jesus when he first gave this parable to the crowd would immediately have been able to see in it the image of the kingdom breaking into people's lives and see also a link to the Hebrew prophets. In Ezekiel, God promises to plant a sprig on the mountain height of Israel that would become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. That phrase, every kind of bird, is a metaphorical speech, meaning all the Gentiles, everyone, everyone in the world, everyone can find protection and shelter in the kingdom of heaven. What a wonderful, welcoming, hospitable, inclusive truth for us to hear. What a promise to fill us with hope. Because no matter who we are, or what we've done in our past, or what we're going through now, all of us, each and every one of us, everyone that you will ever meet that has a mustard seed in here, which can germinate and grow, bringing with it protection and shelter, mighty bounds that will develop. Do you think that's far-fetched? Does it sound to you like wishful thinking? Well, consider the yeast, says Jesus, because that illustrates also how God works, it represents how God is alive and active bringing forth change and growth. This is how the mustard seed becomes a tree, through the yeast-like action of God. The rule of God in our lives is like yeast that a woman mixes with flour until all of it was leavened, or we might say risen, proved. Yeast is the creative life-enhancing power of God. It brings about change and transformation. It turns what was dry and fairly inedible, the flour, into life-sustaining sustenance, the bread, the bread of life. Just like the mustard seed, the small grows to become large, which is so often unseen. That which is so often unseen bursts forth in visible form which that which is overlooked brings forth unforeseen results. God's reign grows like that in remarkable, awe-inspiring and unexpected ways. Jesus encourages his hearers in the next couple of parables to see that there really is a hidden treasure meant for them. But now the emphasis is not on the finding of the treasure or the pearl, but on what the person does when they find it. Went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Bought that uh, pearl. Taking hold of the treasure that God wants to give us, the riches of God's kingdom reigning in our lives, involves our whole person, our complete commitment. We can't search for the meaning of our life with just a bit of ourselves. Jesus is saying it's all or nothing. We have to throw ourselves in, bringing every part of who God wants us to be, warts and all, into the warmth of Christ's life. Now that might sound rather frightening. Is it possible to risk everything, to sell all that we have to give ourselves? to God completely. 
Well, perhaps the motivation for us to do this lies in the joy, the jubilation, the pleasure which the man who finds that hidden treasure discovers. When we discover a joy that comes from God, a joy which is authentic, delightful, life-giving, then our attachment to other things will become loosened. Our priorities change and we will be ready to let our lives be adjusted in ways that we couldn't have foreseen and which we could not manage simply by using our own willpower, which is where the prayer comes in. The story of the treasure underlines how God gives hidden riches independently of our effort, even when we do not know what we are looking for. It's only when we unexpectedly trip over the treasure that we realize that that's what we wanted, that's what we needed all along. This merchant though, the merchant who finds the pearl of great value, what about him? He was already searching for pearls. Although the gospel doesn't say it explicitly, he must certainly have already possessed a, a great collection of pearls. And in fact, it is the experience that he acquired in searching for and buying those pearls, which led him to discover the, the perfect one, the big one. I guess in much the same way, we prepare for the big decisions of life by the small steps of trust that we take as our daily lives unfold. But the pearls that the merchant already possesses present a difficulty for him. He had invested a lot of time and energy in collecting them. And now he has to let them all go in order to take hold of something more important. And that is not easy. We too need to discern between what is good and what is better. We have many things in our life which in themselves are good, but even good things can become distractions from the best thing. We can spend our time doing good things for others and having interesting experiences, but the center of our life can remain curiously empty. The merchant, although he has found many good pearls, remains thirsty for the one of great value. The pearl which constitutes God's, the core of God's call for him. And it is for this that he is willing to give up all his worldly goods. How do we do all this? Still and silent prayer is rooted in focus, surrender and emptying. Through it, we place ourselves in the overlapping and interlocking weave of the physical and spiritual worlds, leaning against the thin veil, catching sight with our hearts of God's realm. In this yielding silence, our deepest prayer is not so much created by us, but heard in us, a duet of whispering voices our voice in harmony with the voice of the Holy Spirit. God is there in the middle of all we think we have hidden from God with our fiberglass screens. Our deepest prayer is our voice connecting with the Holy Spirit, with the voice of the Holy Spirit, connecting in a place where our waiting connects with God's waiting. God is always waiting for us to return to God. As Paul puts it, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. So Alex asks, do we want that mustard seed to grow? Do we want to rise like yeast? Do we want to find the treasure or the pearl of great value? 
so that we can ditch the busyness and distractions and replace them with silence and waiting. We throw away the avoidance techniques and instead turn the matters of our deepest prayer through the stirrings of our hearts over to God in quietness and solitude. It is here in the whispering silence and in the stillness that the hope we have is much more than a simple form of wishful thinking. More than the ability to persuade ourselves that things will surely be better in the future. The hope we have is sure because we already have a foretaste of its fulfillment in and through the work of the Holy Spirit in us. There aren't any fiberglass barriers in God's kingdom. No barricades where God reigns. Only unrestricted, unhindered and complete communication between God and God's creation. It is the spirit who is the power of that restored communication. And the communication that we have now with God through God's spirit is a foretaste of the kingdom of heaven, which is already here, waiting for us to discover and love and enjoy. Amen. So let us confess our faith in that God who waits for us endlessly and in whose spirit we live and move and have our being. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge for him and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mike is now going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, we live in a world of change with everything full of uncertainty. We are surrounded by the twists and turns of life and often we feel we have little or no control over the things that may happen to us. We come to you, Lord, to find constancy. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Yeah. Father God, we pray for your church throughout the world, remembering especially Christians facing persecution for their faith. Be with them all and support them in their suffering. 
We are asked to pray this Sunday for Derry and Ruffo in Ireland with Bishop Andrew Foster. Also for the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Lithuania with Bishop Mindagus Sabutis. In churches together in Stourbridge, we pray this Sunday from St. Thomas's Church. We pray for our bishops, John and Martin, and for our archdeacons, Nikki and Robert. Be with them all as they seek to further your mission in our diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we pray for your creation. You have given us the responsibility for all that you have made. You entrusted every living thing into our care, but we have betrayed that trust and neglected our responsibilities. Species are dying out at an ever increasing rate. We have allowed your good earth to become polluted by our greed damaged by our selfishness and sucked dry by our materialism. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, we may gain a new urgency to fulfill the task you have laid upon us. We pray for all refugees, that they may find safety and security in their chosen countries of refuge. We pray also for all those affected by war where so often the greatest, greatest hardships are felt by the women and children. At this time, we especially remember Yemen. We pray for all aid agencies, that they may be able to deliver aid to where it will be most beneficial. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Yeah. Father, we pray for our nation, for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the national and local governments we have elected. Be with them all and guide them in their deliberations and in making decisions which will affect us all. We pray that the health and financial decisions made will take account of the needs of everybody in dealing with both COVID-19 and Brexit. May decisions be as equitable as possible as we seek to work our way out of the present difficulties. We pray for all, all who have already lost their jobs and all those likely to do so when the furlough scheme ends. May they not be neglected as the country strives to move forward. We pray too that steps will be taken to deal with the scourge of homelessness within our society. We give thanks for the work and sacrifice of medical staff, carers, the emergency services, and all who are providing for our daily needs during the pandemic. We pray that they may all stay safe. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Lord, we pray for our local community here in Old Swinford. We pray for all businesses that they will be able to survive the present downturn and be able to continue to provide the services we rely on for everyday life. We pray for all young people whose education has been disrupted and pray that they will be able to resume their studies in schools and colleges in September and catch up on the lost learning time. Locally, we pray for all those who live in Winchester Drive and Eaton Drive, also for the residents of Doveton House. In our church community, we pray for our clergy, John, Alex and Roger, our church wardens, Judy and Tony, our ALMs and our PCC. Guide them all as we seek to re-establish services in our church building and hold our long overdue annual church meeting and elections. We pray especially for Alex, 
as he prepares to leave us and take up his new appointment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all who are sick, whether in body, mind or spirit, and for all those who care for them. Hear our prayer for all who are in pain, waiting for or recovering from surgery, undergoing treatment or coming to terms with terminal illness. <clears throat> we pray for all those affected by COVID-19, both locally and around the world. We remember scientists and medical researchers as they strive for better treatments and an effective vaccine. We pray for the sick in our own community, David French, Peter and Angela Viner, Mary Joyce Tolly, Jill Finney, Jeremy Taylor and Christopher Peacock. We pray too for Dorothy Gibson, Melita Ling, Brian Drew and Betty Shaw in nursing home care. We continue, continue to remember Sam and Natalie, Audrey, David, Norma, Colin, Roy and Pamela, Josh, Ian, Judy, Joe and Roz, Rory, Elian, Martin, Ruth, Anna, Jonathan, Noah, Dennis, and also the May and Rogerson families. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. Father, we pray for all who have recently died, remembering by name Jan Butler and Roy Lunnan. To all who mourn the loss of loved ones, comfort them and give them the assurance that the close of one chapter is the opening of another, this being the gateway to your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our Lord Jesus Christ, may we commit ourselves to focus on you. May our ears be open to your word, our lives open to your Holy Spirit, and our hearts open to receive your love. May your love shine out in the way we live our lives. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Savior Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Something about reaching this point in the service reminds me week after week that I forget to ask something of Les and Tina. Are we uh, going to have the breakout rooms afterwards, Les? I think we might give it a go with the fellowship afterwards. Yes, afterwards. yes, we'd like to do that, yes. Brilliant, great. So, uh, give, give Les a... Yes, yes. Okay. Set up, so hang on. Right. So hang around afterwards if you want to find yourself in a in a virtual room with somebody you, you won't know who it is beforehand, but you'll be able to have a chat and catch up. And the reason I think of that is because we come to the peace where we can share God's peace with one another. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Chris, 
Ele fez com a identidade. Ele não tinha visto. Ele fez com a identidade. Ele fez com a identidade. Lord, my hands are all clean, my heart is all prepared. Can I say the word? That shall be. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning, you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, for sun in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms for us on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. 
pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us, the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with St. Mary and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us grace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We say together. Almighty God, we thank, thank you for you feeding us Lord. with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and to work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Very lovely to see you all on Zoom, to know that you're with us on Facebook, to hear Dorothy with us on the phone. Um, please do stay behind on Zoom if you'd like to chat with someone and uh, we will see you again. Well, we'll see you in church <laughs> if you're able to make it next Sunday. If you're not and you're on Zoom, we'll see you in church as well. And um, We'll see anybody who wants to join us on Tuesday or Thursday for those services too. Thank you very much, Les and Tina. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Judith. And God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God you, bless John. you, John. Thank, yes. you, thank you all. Thank you, thank you very thank you. much. Thank, thank, thank you, Les. Thank you, Les. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Tina.